we're here at New York Comic Con, where we're about to meet some of the talent behind Warner Brothers' upcoming supernatural love story, Beautiful Creatures. The world of Twilight, obviously, is really, everyone knows, I'm sure you hear that word all the time. What do you, what do you, say, in, what do you say in response to it? It's not Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. I'm sorry, it's just not. I mean, there are a lot of, I mean, yes, it's a love story. One person has powers, but that's where it ends. How do you like switching around the genre, though, where yeah. it's the guy who's the main character yeah. who's trying to discover this world? What I like about that is you get to see what a guy goes through when he's courting a girl. Because at ah. the beginning of the movie, she wants nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of time spent where I'm trying to get at her and trying to charm her <laughs> and sort of going, oh, am I screwing it up and stuff like that. Well, as his wingman, what's the best advice you give him in the film? Um... Girls are mad dogs, son. You either run or shoot. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's a little that's sneak peek. Oh, perfect. That's one of my lines. Oh, I love it. But picture it with an accent, and it'll sound oh, cool. perfect. Sounds perfect. Yeah. Great. So you're the evil ex-girlfriend. But what is in it? In the movie, not in the yes. life. Let's clarify. <laughs> well, what does it take to be an evil, evil ex-girlfriend in a supernatural love story? You know what? How I interpret it is, my character doesn't have supernatural powers, but she uses her popularity as her supernatural power. <laughs> I think a lot of people in high school would say that's true. Yeah, yeah. I know. Well, it, the movie seems very cool, and not only that it has supernatural elements, but it seems to have a, a historical side to it, too. Yeah. So did you, you know you're the first person to ask that question. Oh, good. <laughs> to bring up the Civil War. And right, like yeah. yeah. Did you study that or look into that? I got, a, I got a book of poetry from the Civil War. I'm not in any of the actual Civil War stuff, mm -hmm. but I, I wanted to get like a, a feeling for it, and it's a... There's this thing that's like these Civil War reenactments, which mm -hmm. are real. These people yeah. go every weekend and do these Civil War reenactments. So that's this thing that we do in the town, and all the teenagers are like, Ugh, I hate doing this. <laughs> and then, you know, well, you'll see. There's some, there's some oh. other, there's some, there's some time ah, stuff. Ah, that sounds very exciting. I think it's interesting to see a movie that's so rooted in the history of the South. Absolutely. The South has a great deal to do with it because the casters have been around as long as we have, and they've fought on every side of every war. They're just this secret... A uh, society of people who have supernatural powers who have to remain hidden, but they're around us and they're they're among us. And part of me believes that. You've discovered some great young actors here. They're amazing. But, These actors are unbelievable. But your other your your older actors are, are amazing. unbelievable. How did you get such talent? I don't know. Um, <laughs> they all said they love the script, so I have to believe them. Kudos but that's to you. that's yeah. why they uh, that's what what attracted them to it. Um, I took characters in the book that I combined mm -hmm. to make Viola's character. And also for Emma, I wanted to do a movie that wasn't um, heavy on visual effects, so I wanted to have actors who, whose performances would be all that you need ah, to tell the story. They're their own special effects, Exactly, right? because there's, yeah, I mean, when Emma Thompson glares at you, there's not much more you need. Richard did as little CGI as possible. Oh, good. So mm -hmm. when we were doing it, Things are really, you know, happening. So it oh, was, really? it was, yeah, real flying and not real flying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he knows Tinkerbell. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, but they had like you in the, the trailer. There's, you see for a second. There's this thing where oh, we're the turning, oh, yeah. and that's a real turntable that they built, where the table's going one way and the floor is going the other oh, way. Oh, wow. And it's this really amazing. So, like, it was great because I didn't have to work with a tennis ball. <laughs> We're living in the age of Twilight, yeah. you know, but I think that your film, because it has a male lead, has a potential for a lot of crossover maybe to, to guys seeing the film. Uh, how do you think it differs from Twilight? How do you think Beautiful Creatures is not like Twilight? Well, it's hard because, like, I, I, I keep saying this, like, peop humans have this instinct to want to compare things and to want to understand it before they before they can, before they have the opportunity to understand it. Yeah. And if you haven't read the book or you haven't seen the trailer or whatever, um, it stands alone. What do you yeah. say to the guys out there who are like, no way, dude? Well, uh, I say, first of all, Clear whatever ideas you had in your head already, and you should go see because there's a lot of beautiful women in the movie, um, and you know it's from a guy's perspective. So I think everyone can relate to Alden's character in this, and he's not—he's not your typical everyman. He's really funny. Alden's really funny, and I think that's something that's missing from a lot of these types of movies. It's more epic than, like, let's say, a Twilight. There's more of an epic quality to it. Oh, I like that a lot. I and mean, yeah. when you say epic, do you think you'll make more films, or? If it goes, God bless, it'd be great. We have we have other books to uh, to uh, source. Um, I haven't read them. I've only read this one to make this one the best it could be. But yes, uh, we are all ready to go if it goes.